Hello, alrighty. Welcome to the tutorial where we're dealing with Archicad modules. And if you don't know what modules are, well, here's the very simplest way to understand it. This is a building that I still have ongoing, but let's assume it's completed. It's on actual project, so I'll be using it as an example for the modules. But what's that modules for crying out loud? Take a look at this image here. Um, there's this building, and you can see this guy right here. It's an exact copy of this. Says this guy as well. I think these other renderings would make it much more obvious these are exact copies of the same thing and you can see there's one somewhere here by the way there's one here there's one here there's one here if you're designing for an estate community housing and stuff like that you meet this kind of designs every now and then and a lot of people make what i call the stupid mistake sorry to whomever feels i insulted their way of doing a kick it wasn't exactly the intention but what they do is they like come over here, copy everything, either like this, or maybe use the marquee tool, and they start making multiple copies. And that can be a nightmare. Imagine you're done with that, and then you have so many of these all over the place, and then the client or the estate or whatsoever wants something that's still going to reflect on your 3Ds for you to re-render, but they're like, we don't like these windows that, you know, they're just so big, and this hood is so long. We would prefer if you have slim windows that run all the way from here to down here, and then we'll have like four of those windows for aesthetics if you've done that and there's like 40 copies of this building on your estate layout you're you're done for bro like you're gone you're, do you're doomed <laughs> you're literally gonna edit all 40 of them and with modules or probably delete all of them and then edit one and start copying it all over the place but with modules no you don't have to go through that stress so with modules you may be a change in one and then the change goes across all of them if you feel that's interesting and you want to really learn about circuit card modules then you're at the right place and I think we can begin. Alright, so for a bonus, for as many as are seeing the plan like this, we mostly do our plans like this. You might want to make your plan appear slightly different. So by the end of the video, I'll be showing you a different representation of plans and one that you know could appear much more aesthetically pleasing, especially to you, the architect. After all, you're the first person who's meant to love your job before anyone else does. All right, so what do you want to do? First things first, we want to save this file. And because of this is someone else's file, I might not be with it, so I'm just going to save a copy. Okay, um, I'm going to create a new folder and call it modules tutorial. All right, and now I'm going to save as an Archicad project. Okay, and I'm going to name this main file all right so now that i've done this um the name changes here from unique to main file and i can come make some of the changes i was talking about first things first on the site plan here uh all of this seem like too deep in the background it's really nice it really fits into what i want but as of this exact moment no so i want to take away everything from here forward so uh and okay lest i forget all of this fencing okay um, the whole front is going, this one is going, so yeah, everything here, out, this wall, um, you, out, okay, this slab, come inside, now one might be wondering, why exactly am I adjusting all of these things, you, out, and here's the simplest answer, I won't even be needing this in the first place, so I think, uh, just pick everything from here, break it down at around this point, yeah, and then take all of these guys out. You out. And for now, I'm left with something like this. Not so ideal, but if I'll be having repetitive patterns of this, I think this fence would serve as the left fence for the guy on the other side. Okay, so based on that, it would be much more beneficial to me that I have it only on one side so all the others can fit in properly to each other. I hope that makes a lot of sense to all of us. So I'm just going to extend this a bit so that cars can pack in front of here. Who knows? I might just be letting the spirits to render this later on. And if you don't know how I'm doing what I'm doing right now with Control H, one of the most super useful tools I learned from um, with Archicad recently, it's beautiful. All right, so. Uh, I think there's enough to park vehicles here, okay, and then, okay, so we're going to create a new Archicad project, okay, we're going to open Archicad once again, my PC is not typically fast once it's not plugged to the power, and that's the case right now, so I'm uh, going to go with new, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait, I might just speed up this part of the video, 
All right, so uh, rather than speed it up, I think I just want to go ahead and talk about the floor plan stuff I mentioned earlier. So I'd first of all, I want to ensure that the shadows here on the 3D are visible. Why do I want to see the shadows? I need to know the angle, or not you, the angle that's controlling the projection of those shadows. And right now, the sun's altitude is at 35. I want something way higher, kind of like 75, okay? And once I have this, next thing I want to do is go back here on plan, locate any of the floor plans. Right now, I think I'm going to be into this one and be like, new 3D document from plan and create. This well, is even worse than what we had up there. So why did I assume, uh, why did I preach that I was going to come up with something really interesting? Well, that's because I have not any of the settings. So I want to activate shadows. I want to take away transparency. Uh, for now, I'm going to skip this guy. Uniform on cut pen, definitely. Uniform fill. Uh, I'll make sure you show this all the way to the stories below. So right now, I think we're going to get a um, quick improvement. Okay, so uh, next thing, uh, the zones right here. I do not need to see them. They're kind of obstructing me. So I'm going to go into the layers. I press Ctrl A for that and then hide off the zone layer. And then, there we go. Not bad. You know, we can see all the doors open, the plan with a bit of shadow casting. And, you know, with a bit of line width, this could really look awesome. And then, you know, once you annotate it, you add your grid lines and all that. This looks, at least to me, way better than having something like this. Okay, that's it. This should be open by now. Okay, so here's a new project. Um, with all the changes I've done, I'm going to save this once more, okay? So now that I've done that, I'm going to come into the new project here, go into the files, go into the external content, and say I want to place a hot link, okay? So I'm going to need to select a module. The module is a complete project. And great news, your modules don't necessarily have to be Archicad solo projects, no. They could be module files, files that you saved as module files. They could be teamwork projects, they could be just 2D line, they could be IFCs. IFCs are the most efficient way of communicating between Archicad, Revit, Vectorworks, Allplan, and all that, all BIM software. They could be Revit models, they could be Rhino models, you understand? And you don't have to import them separately and deal with all the stress of making sure things look the way they do. It just retains all of that for you if you're going to use any of that here. So that's really wonderful. For in this case, I'm going to be using an Archicad file. So um, I created a folder for modules, right? Yeah. And in there, I place this. So I'm going to select this guy and bring in all the stories. Okay. And yeah, that's the module I want. Select. And then I can say place hot link. And right now, it's telling me there is no minus one story on this new project. There's a minus one story on my own, on the original project, this guy. So, what does he want exactly? What he wants is to inform me that everything inside a minus one story are going to be invisible unless I add a minus one story. So, I could say okay, and then place this where I want. It lands in the original position by default, by the way, and then I could move it. But if I don't want to move it, I'm going to leave it where it is. I press escape for that and then click somewhere outside and there we go. Now, when I'm done, um, I said we're going to create the minus one story. So, insert below and what was the story height from over here? I think 600, I typically use 600. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the height, 600. All right. So, and I think the individual heights of the floors were 3.3. Three. By the way, anyone wondering why I'm using 3.3 three around the standard 3 meters? It's because I consider the thickness of the slab that's going to reduce it to like 3150, and I like designing buildings with the mindset that POP is going to be installed, taking down extra of the supposed 3150. So, at the end of the day, we end up with something around exactly 3 meters. If I was to build it myself, I ensure we do that all the time. Okay, so that said, I'm going to like click on the ground floor here and say okay. But now, the module is going to be updated. You see, these were Hosted on the minus one floor. We're not seeing them earlier. Now they're here. And by the way, I just can't come here and make changes. Um, if I select one thing, it selects everything because it has them grouped and locked. Okay? So I could suspend the grouping and pick them one at a time, but I can't move. I can't. They are locked. When you see square hotspots like these around objects, they are locked. You can't do nothing to them. You can affect their visibility. You say, for example, I do not want to see dimensions. Okay? Dimension in general, I don't want to see that. They go. Say I don't want to see the zone information zone and I hide that. There you go. I don't want to see furniture and all that, you know. If you also want a tutorial on layers, request to read in the comments and definitely I want to overlook it. I'll definitely do that. So um go back to the 3D here. You see we have an exact replica of what we had before. By the way, on the 3D I love using simplified plans, so I get these black outlines rather than these multicolored outlines that I don't I'm just not comfortable with it. It's a me thing. It doesn't have to apply to you, but you know, I prefer I love seeing my 3D look like this. Okay, so let's create a street with six of these houses. 
Okay, so I'm going to make sure that this guy is not on. If it was on, I put it off. Then I just select one, then press Control. Oh, I could use Control U. So let me just measure starts and end points. Okay, so I'm going to start here and end here. That's 18 5 by 5. So we're going to use Control U, spread with 18 5 by 5 millimeters. And I'm like, okay. So begin here. And how many houses would I say again? Six. So that's like four, five, six. And just take some seconds and boom. It is. This is also going to affect regular flows. I'm like, yeah, this is story building. It's supposed to affect regular flows. Great. So, just like that, we have the project six copies. You can see that. And it's not over. Sorry, I should not have done that. Okay. It's not over. It's not just limited to we having this, you know, really beautiful streets right here. And now you guys can understand why I didn't, why this guy is missing. I could come add it manually, by the way. Um, but. That's, that's not really within the scope of this project. If you want that, we just ask in the comments and I'll do a really short video about that. But why I had done that was because, as I said, this guy now acts as a left for this building. This guy, which is the right for this, acts as a left for this, and blah, 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 blah. It doesn't end here. Let's say I wanted them mirrored. You know, this stuff look kind of looking to me now like a number nine, okay? I want it to appear like a P or an inverted G, whatever, on this end and back and forth. Um, because of I didn't consider that initially for defensing, uh, defensing might not, you know, give me exactly what I want on that. So I'm just going to take one of these, um, bring the copy somewhere a bit far, not like far, far, far away. Um, yes, create the copy there. And, you know, I could just mirror. Control Shift M. And just so that defensing also appear within the 3D, you know, I'm just going to make it look like there inside one big compound. Okay. So with this, I could then take the measurements of and to end that's that's a seven one one zero okay and i'm really tempted here to go with that seven one one zero when i'm duplicating but no what i should be doing is ensuring that these columns actually overlap into each other i don't really care at this moment since we're not going to notice on the 3d that's way the fencing position remains exactly the same and every other thing changes okay so i might have to do this a few more times if i need six but you get the whole idea. I don't think I need to go that far for you to do so. I believe everyone watching this video has some atom of sense. We're not all done. Okay, so, you know, you can see that the mirroring worked real fine. And streets are typically not, you know, one-sided. So, I could always, um, you know, create another copy on the other side of the road. How long is this video so far? 16 minutes. Oh, God. Okay, um, take all of you. I want the road to be like 9 meters wide. Oh, let's make that 10.5. I could eventually start in the other stuff, but I'm not here to design anything. I'm here to show you how modules work and the fact that modules work. So now I mirrored the other way as well, and you know, just as it appeared on the plan, it's like it the 3D also is given. Okay, so that said, I believe by now you should have learned a bit about modules and should be able to go about managing them. But let's talk about the change side to it. So I did mention that hypothetical scenario where they're like they don't like these windows. So um let's go to the first floor by the way. Yeah. This is the original file by the way. I can I can edit this. This is where oh open. This is where I'm doing the modules. This is the original file. Okay, so let's not make that up. This is that really large window we have up there. So I'm gonna copy one of these. I hold alternate and click on that by the way so I can get its parameters. Then I want the windows dimensions to still fit in within this place, but I want them a bit slimmer. So I'm just going to come with this small window right here. Um make it with 400. I could adjust the height probably on the 3D to fit in with what I had here before. And we wanted how many windows again? Uh I think we said four. I'm gonna make them five anyway and place the last one here so it fits in just right okay so i'm gonna use this icon if you don't have it that's already in the section <laughs> so in the comments i ask you guys to ask for a lot in the comments that's because if i was to explain every single um stuff i do these tutorials are basically never gonna end so i'm taking away these um cases because on the in fact let me not take them away yet um i'm gonna see lots of windows here and their heights are not really exactly where they should be right now. I don't like the fact that their casings are so close to each other. Let me first of all adjust their heights. Okay, so click on any one of them, raise its heights. And if you want to know that you are the correct spot, Akika tells you with that black dot. You know, the pencil becomes black initially 
it's a different color but when you have the correct position it's black and that's a really good indicator so this big window here before out uh aesthetically this is just not doing it for me i'd rather not have so much of the whites shouting around here that's the only reason why i want their casements gone that's nice the casements they are kissing all right so come over here and switch up the outside casing and there you have it feels like the kind of thing i'd want to do yeah okay so once i save this okay and here's one of the really most mind-blowing parts of this for those who didn't know this tool on Africa prior to today we still have this here nothing's changed until i do come in here go into the external content hot link module manager he sees that the original guy has been modified so i click on this guy and i'm like update and once i say okay here's what's gonna happen it's gonna go across every single one of them can you see that and it's updated all of them now all their windows appear just the right way if i was to make some other change say for example put a heat proof on the original a heat proof is gonna appear on all of them so i think you get the whole general idea i'm not gonna take my time and do all of that but yeah if you've not been using modules and you've been saving wasting a lot of time on repetitive tasks yeah you owe me a, you owe me a coffee <laughs> all right now see you in the next one if you found this useful um please like it doesn't cost you anything it's just one button right there just click on the like and that's all and if you've not subscribed please do if you have anything else at all you want to do in Akika, i'm placing this as a challenge out there to anyone who listened all the way to this point anything you want to do with Akika, and you know it's possible ask me I've not focused on anything else in my life for a while right now. It's been me and this software. Ask me. I'm going to get it done. Okay? See ya. Bye.